Are you guys ready for a fun, easy episode with little icebreakers in it today? This is one of them. Putting post-it notes all over yourselves. It's a good one, trust me. There's a few more where that one came from. All right, well, welcome back to another episode of Youth Ministry Insights, and it's a fun one. We're going to learn a couple quick, easy icebreakers for you to use at your youth ministry events, meetings, just a typical youth night. So a couple of them require some supplies in advance, and others don't. So I'm going to start off easy, the ones that don't require any supplies in advance. The first one is my favorite. It's a classic. You might have heard of it. Two truths and a lie. So I typically like to use this as a little lesson, a little teaching on the faith that like lying's not allowed. We shouldn't not, we shouldn't lie. We shouldn't, you know, do that in a typical day. But here right now at Youth Ministry, you're allowed to lie and we want you to lie good. So how to play the game is ask each youth to think of three things about themselves. Two are true, one is the lie. And the group has to pick out what the lie is or the individual if you're keeping score. If you're keeping score, I tend to ask them to have a little piece of paper and keep track of their amount correct. And I also tell them if it's a little hard for you to think of a lie or think of these three things and one be the lie, maybe write them all down so you could just read it so that's not off the top of your head. But I always give them an example. So for you all, here's my example. I am a youth minister. I've been in ministry for 14 years and I love cats. I'm sure you can figure out the lie. But my point is there are three things that maybe not everybody knows about yourself that they can pick out the lie. So I always give them little examples, maybe places you travel, your favorite color, how many siblings you have, sports you play, things about yourself that maybe people know, but they don't know all of the details. It gets us to learn one another and to have a little fun while doing it. Another no supply needed icebreaker game is give me five. This can be played in groups of teams, like different teams that can play each other, as little as one person per team, five people per team. I wouldn't go maybe more past eight people per team. And those teams work together to come up with five answers to the question. So it's different topics. You can gear these questions totally towards the faith or totally just generic ones. So an example of a generic question where you're asking them to give you five Examples of that topic would be, give me five cereal flavors. Give me five sports teams. Or you can go a little bit more detailed. Give me five teams on the NBA. Something like that. Or again, gearing towards the faith. You could say, give me five apostles. Give me five books of the Bible. Give me five saints. And you can play till seven or 10 or however many points you want to get to reach the top or just amount of time. You have 15 minutes left at the end of your youth ministry night and you want to fill that time a little bit. We'll play this game at the end. And when the 15 minutes is up, whatever team has the most points, win a prize or get bragging rights. Okay, some examples of icebreaker games that require a little bit of uh, supplies or maybe setup. So the one I did at the beginning, the post-it notes, <laughs> still right here. Um, Buying packs of post-it notes, I suggest the brand post-its, not like any ones that you're going to find at a dollar store, only because the stickiness is where it's going to matter. So having a whole stack of post-it notes, the whole pad, and oh, I got it right here. Where is it? It's right here. Having the whole pad. So I think it's a hundred on the pad or whatever it is. And one youth has to put them all over their body first but if any fall you could have some youth assisting that fall and pick them up off the ground and hand them to that other youth they're racing so you have maybe three or four or five different youth each with their own pad and maybe a helper to help them and you're putting them all over that's another fun one requires a little bit of uh supplies but not much they aren't super expensive another one that requires a little bit of supplies are very again simple paper plates so you're gonna play a game where you have a paper plate. Hang on, let me go get one. Okay, so you're gonna play a game where you have a paper plate on your head. The, the youth do, you don't, um, but the youth have it on their head. And you're gonna have a scene already planned out that you are gonna dictate to them. The key is they can't look at what they're drawing. So they have to put the pen on top of their head. 
and listen for the prompts from you. So one of the prompts um, might be draw a line for the ground. Okay, they have to draw a line for the ground. Now you're going to tell them, now draw a church. Okay, they have to try to draw a church. Okay, now draw you walking into the church. Okay, they draw themselves. All right, now draw in your hand um, a bag. Okay, draw the bag. All right, and then uh, draw your parents next to you walking into church. All right, they draw that. Draw some birds in the sky. And whatever other scenes you want to add to that, right? You get the point. Once you have these scenes drawn out, they look at it and they're like, oh my gosh, it's like crazy. <laughs> and then you tell them the point values. Okay, if your church was on the ground, touching the ground, not floating, you can see mine isn't touching the ground, it just misses it. If your church was on the ground, give yourself 15 points. And I always tell them honesty policy, again, a little lesson. I'm like, don't be cheating. Honesty policy, we're at youth group here. All right, if your church was on the ground, give yourself 15 points. And I say, just write it on the side if you got it so you can add them up. Next, if you are on the ground, if your feet are on the ground and you're not floating, give yourself 10 points and whatever value you want to make it. If your church had a roof attached, give yourself 10 points. If your church had a cross on top, I didn't show that in mine, but if it did, give yourself 15 points. Or maybe you want to make things that are like of the faith a little higher value, 50 points. If you had the bag in your hand, give yourself 10 points. You understand what I'm saying, right? So give different values for the different things. And you'll know how many points it was out of. Maybe you're making it out of 100 points. So now you start after you did all your point values. Who had 100 points? Okay, no one. All right, anybody have 90? Anybody have 80? And whoever had the most points, give them a prize. Now with these prizes, I like to do a couple different things. If I want to really draw them in, if I want to really promote an event or get an event like started or going, um, get the ministry year off to a good start, sometimes I'll have parishioners donate $5 gift cards to some local places. Wawa, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, you know, the places that the kids love. And I'll use those as the prizes because if the kids here, they can win prizes of $5 Wawa gift cards. They get excited to come. Also throughout the year, I love to have little holy medals, little sacramentals, little statues, things that are blessed and things that uh, are of value to our faith and to them as prizes as well. So I'll hand out little crucifixes, again, little statues, little medals to saints. So those are a way to kind of incorporate the faith as the prize. And sometimes I just say, hey, we have no prizes today. It's bragging rights. And that's always fun too. So these little icebreakers can really help build your ministry, kind of fill in some of that fun aspects of your ministry and allow you to, well, do exactly what we do, break the ice. But in turn of breaking the ice, you're still touching the hearts and touching the souls of the youth. So, God bless.